Hello and welcome to Piccolo Stitchworks. My name is Nicole and today we're going to be doing some spinning. I am still a pretty new spinner. I only started about 10 months ago or so last July and I haven't really experimented with color yet. I've mostly just been kind of fiddling around with different drafting techniques to kind of see what feels comfortable and what gets me a yarn that I like. And so today I'm going to be jumping into some color. So I have this beautiful braid that I received as a gift. And so I'm going to play around with this and some other fiber that I have as well. This is definitely not going to be a tutorial kind of video. I'm not really experienced. As I said, this is my first time trying playing with color. So this is more of a I'm going to try this. So maybe you'll watch and learn something along with me kind of video. Um, and if you're an experienced spinner and you want to leave some comments or ideas in the uh, comment section below, then feel free to do that. I'm sure we could all learn something from each other, which is why we're here. So I joined in on the fiber swap hosted by a fiber collective this spring, and they are a brand that has um, subscription boxes for fiber. And then they also have kind of fiber lifestyle products, such as like uh, journals and tools and things like that on their website. So for the fiber swap, they have you sign up and then match you with a partner. And then you, know, you and your partner can exchange info, tell each other a little bit about yourselves, and then send each other nice little gift boxes with fiber and other kind of fiber themed goodies. And my partner was Michelle from Color Me Happy Fiber Art Studio. So here is her card, which was really neat. She actually sent me some of her hand dyed yarn. I'm going to show you the things that she sent me. And then I created a little box of things to send her as well, which was super fun. So I sent her a project bag that I sewed. and I made these little stitch markers just as a fun extra little thing. I found the instructions for that on a blog, so I will link to that in the description box. For fiber, I picked out this 19 micron Australian Merino that I got on Etsy from a shop called Galibaba. And so I picked a few colors of that so she could either spin them together, maybe blend them or do some stripes or kind of play around with the different colors. And the yarn I chose for her was Haiku Sueño, which is a really silky soft kind of yarn. So I thought she would really like that. And this is a shawl pin that I picked up at a small yarn shop when I was traveling. And I also included a paper copy of my Arctic Wave headband pattern, which I just released and is available on Ravelry and on my website. So I will link that in the description below as well. So for my box, she sent me two skeins of her flaxen yarn, which is baby alpaca, linen, and silk. And these are hand dyed with natural dyes. So it's this really nice green and then a natural color as well. And I'm really excited to make some kind of springy item. I'm thinking I might want to try to make a top. We'll see if I have enough yarn. I have to look at the yardage and kind of figure it out with a pattern, but um, either that or some kind of shawl or something that feels nice and springy. She also sent me these little stitch markers from a brand called Crafty Like a Monkey, and they are the cutest little animals. And she sent me a copy of The Power of Knitting, which I've actually heard of this book and I had wanted to read it, so that was perfect. And I did start it, so I have a little yarn scrap uh, bookmark in there right now. Uh, so I'm excited about that. And she sent me this sweet little card, handwritten note. And the fiber that we're going to play with today uh, is from Wolfing Fiber. So this is 70% 18.5 micron merino and 30% mulberry silk. And it's four ounces and it's this beautiful braid. So it has nice earthy sort of springy colors. It's just the kind of thing I like. 
And when I picked out the fiber for her, I actually bought some for myself. So this is the um, merino that I purchased from Galibaba on Etsy. And so I got this pink color and I also got a green color. So I'm gonna try playing around with these together. I want to split this braid in half and do half of it with uh, one ply of this and one ply of the pink together. I think that would be really pretty. And then I also want to try doing a fractal spin because I've never done that before and it's really interesting to me. So I thought I would just split this in half, do half uh, applied with this, half as a fractal and kind of compare them and see what they turn out like, see what they look like knitted up. And then maybe I'll either work them both into a project or make different projects or kind of go from there. But that's gonna be what we're gonna play with today. So here's my most recent spin, which is some Hunter Green Coriadale and it's from that same Etsy shop. And I think they turned out really nice. I'm excited to see how they turn out plied up. I think they're gonna end up being, or I think it's gonna be about a sport weight. And I'm gonna try the same technique I was using for this on the new yarn or on the new fiber because I was getting pretty comfortable with my rhythm. And um, I think this is sort of what I would call my default. We'll see um, as I continue playing around with it, but I sort of got into a rhythm with these and I think they turned out relatively consistent. I'm not, I'm not trying to be perfect here. I'm not, not a perfectionist when it comes to learning new crafts and just doing things for myself. I really like to just play around and have fun. All right, so let's see what happens when we unfold this braid. Uh, I think I'm doing it from the wrong end. <laughs> There we go. Well, no. I thought there was supposed to be a magic side where it just, you just pull and it comes undone. There we go, okay. So pretty. All right, so we've got this sort of earthy green that goes into the purple, greenish turquoise. Purple, green, purple, green. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, I don't think I wanna do the whole thing. I kinda wanna just do a sample of the two different spins and then maybe I'll see which I like better and then I'll do the rest like that. Or maybe I'll end up doing half and half and play with them together. But since this is sort of a repeating pattern of the two different colors, I'm just going to take the end, let's see, I'm gonna take this end and take a section of the green going into purple and just pull it apart right where it goes back to the greenish color. Okay, well, that's not as easy as I thought it would be. Just gonna spread it out a little bit more. There we go. So the rest of this, I'm gonna set aside. And then I'm going to split this in half lengthwise. Okay, so there's half and half. And then I'm going to take, maybe I'll do a similar length of the pink. I can't decide if if I should split the pink in half because it's yeah I think it's probably about double the thickness oh I should weigh it okay all right so this strip was about 15 grams so oh I lost track of which was which hold on okay 15 grams of this to match up with 15 grams of this the rest is going in my fiber basket over here so I don't get it mixed up. So now I just have 15 grams of pink and 15 grams of the multicolor and it's time to get spinning. This is an Ashford traditional wheel that I got secondhand. So I'm just going to pre-draft a tiny bit. I've never spun with silk before so this will be also new in that way. Okay. 
All right, so now that I'm started, I'm gonna resituate a little bit here so that I'm comfortable distance. The, the silk definitely feels very different than working with 100% wool, so this is going to be interesting. All right, we're getting, I think we're getting a little thin here. Maybe not enough twist for how thin that is. What I found when I was doing the Corydale was that um, I would do five treadles and five drafts backwards and that was a good rhythm to create sort of a single that would end up being about a sport weight once I plied them together. So I'm trying to get back into that same groove but it's a little different with the silk. we're getting there. Let's do another plyback sample. Maybe that's a little thicker now, but you know, it's not gonna be perfect. Well, here's a little sample I still have on my wheel from when I was doing that green uh, fiber. So yeah, it's a little bit thicker than that. We're just gonna go for it. Again, we're not striving for perfection here. We're just striving for experimentation, fun. I should have thought of this before, but I just realized I think I want to have more of a mix of instead of just all purple and then all the green. I want it to go like purple, green, and purple, green sections. So I I know it's not going to be perfect since I didn't measure it before I started spinning, but I'm just going to break this off so that I have purple sections here. And then I'm going to split this into two and then I'll go purple, green, purple, green, purple. And then that one plied with the pink is gonna create more of a, a stripe.
Okay, here is bobbin number one. So this was a sequence of uh, purple, green, purple, green, purple. And this is going to get plied with the plain pink once I get that spun up. So here is the first set of singles. And I'm going to go ahead and apply these now. I'm actually running out of bobbins because I only have four and I have the two bobbins that have the uh, hunter green yarn on them, or singles. So I'm going to try to use one of those and actually just ply on top of it. I feel like there's not that much yarn here and those bobbins weren't really full, so we're gonna see if that works. This is a good, good experiment. I'm going to just tie a piece of scrap yarn on here to sort of serve as a new leader and see if this works. So I just tied the leader onto the singles and we're gonna fly.
have our first plied yarn, which it looks like there's a lot more than there is because there is the green single underneath, but it's so pretty. It makes me think of garden fairies and candy. So I just quickly wrap this around my yarn swift so that we can see it in hank form. And it's looking pretty nice. It's definitely not consistent or perfect in any way. We've got a little, little extra twist in there, but that's all right. Let's see if I can get this and do a cute little mini skein. Super cute. So the first skein is weighing in at about 25 grams. And I realized that when I split the original piece that I pulled of the um, hand dyed fiber, I split that in half, but then I plied this with a different fiber. So this is only gonna be about half of that amount. So this is 16, okay, a little more than half, but I wanna make them about equal. So I'm gonna pull a little bit more of this fiber out and add it to this bunch so that they end up being about the same, both of the samples. Okay, so I wanted to make sure I got some of the green and some of the purple. So I just pulled a thin strip and it looks like this is getting us about, oh, about eight, maybe a little bit more. So we want about nine grams. Eh, that's close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. So here's my fiber for the second sample. And uh, because I have it in two sections here, since I wanted to add a little bit more, um, a little bit more to this so that it would end up being about 25 grams total, uh, they don't line up perfectly. So this, this one's a little bit longer and then I'm matching them where it turns to purple about there. And then it's a little bit longer on this end too. So I'm going to do a fractal-ish spin <laughs> as close as I can get with what I've got going on here. Uh, so I'm going to pull a little bit more to add to the second piece since this one's quite a bit thinner than this one and I want it to be about half and half. I'm just going to split that so that they end up being a little bit closer to half and half. So we're going to keep this one intact and spin it as is. And then this one, it's already divided in about a third and then two thirds. So I'm going to split the thicker section in two so that we have three sections that are all equal-ish. Okay, so that's three there. So. I'm going to spin this one starting at the green end and going all the way to the purple end. And then this one we're going to do green, purple, green, purple, green, purple. And then we're going to apply those together and that gives us a fractal. Let's try it. Here's a little playback sample. I think it's looking like the thickness that I want.
right, so bobbin number one for the second sample is done. So this one fades from green to purple. You can mostly see the purples since that's what came second, but um, yeah, it's looking really good. Okay, here is bobbin number two. And this is it compared to the first bobbin, which definitely didn't do a great job of making them even. There's a lot more on the second bobbin, but that's okay. We'll just have a little extra. Now it's time to ply. Well, I just reached the end of one of the bobbins. I actually don't have too much left on the other one. I thought it was going to be a little more. That's not too bad. And I can always use that to practice chain flying because I haven't tried that yet. So having a little bit of leftover isn't the worst thing. Here is the finished yarn. Here are my two finished mini skeins. So this was the first one I did, which I applied with the pink merino. And then this was the second one, which was a fractal spin. I think the, the first one, I either spun it more loosely or just I underplied it because it's definitely a little looser in the twist. This one is spun a little bit tighter. Neither of them are particularly consistent, but uh, it was fun to play around with the color and I'm really excited to see how they look knitted up as well.
So here we have my finished sample. So this was the end I started at, which was the yarn that was spun with the uh, pink merino. And then that goes all the way to here. I decided to try a little section of just um, striping the two. So here you can see I alternated two rows of each skein. And then this section here, um, which has a little bit of a tighter gauge, is actually done in one by one color work. So I was alternating each stitch and then on the next row I would alternate them sort of like a checkerboard. Um, so that created a really interesting effect there. And then this last section is the uh, fractal spun yarn. I think my favorite section is honestly this one by one color work part. I love the way it kind of creates a speckly sort of look and you don't really see distinct stripes. Whereas in other sections you can see more of a stripe effect. Um, even though they're kind of gradual, this is a very narrow sample. So if this was done in something that's a bit wider, those stripes are gonna be more close together. So you can see the different sections of yarn or different sections of the different colors more clearly in those sections as opposed to this kind of creates a really neat effect that's, yeah, really pretty. Maybe I'll uh, play around with that more. Well, I hope you enjoyed coming along on this little experiment. Uh, leave me a comment down below letting me know which was your favorite of the samples or which yarn you liked the best. And uh, maybe if you're a spinner as well, let us know what kinds of yarns you like to spin and how you like to play with color. And um, yeah, or if you have any um, ideas or suggestions of what I could do with these little 25 gram skeins of uh, sample yarn, I would love to get your ideas. So thank you so much again for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.